Welcome to our coverage from Bioprocessing International European Summit here in Vienna. Here at Bioprocessing International European Summit, we've asked a number of industry-leading experts from across all sectors what are the biggest challenges that they are currently facing in their work and what is being done to resolve and overcome these challenges. Here's what they had to say. Well, certainly in the downstream area, there are additional challenges. Uh, there are some, um, compared to the upstream, uh, the, the consensus is that continuous bioprocessing bio -processing and purification is more straightforward than in the upstream. And there is less debate about the cost benefits uh, of continuous chromatography, for example. Uh, there's a pretty consistent report from the industry around, around the globe uh, that continuous chromatography can afford reduced uh, quantity of resin required and therefore and also a reduced quantity of buffer required. Uh, and being a more straightforward system with fewer parameters, fewer variables compared to upstream, the complexity of continuous downstream processing seems to be reduced compared to upstream. So the, the ability to deploy it and to scale it out and to, and to transfer it to manufacturing settings and environments uh, is, is predicted to be easier. And as you know, continuous chromatography has been around for a long time in the small molecule industry. Uh, so it, it itself, in addition to perfusion in the upstream, is not new technology. But for biopharmaceuticals, it's, it's, it's obviously new uh, as a new application. And we will see over the next you know, five, 10 years how well it, it progresses from the laboratory and pilot scale into the commercial uh, uh, sector. Well, okay, so to adoption of some of these new technologies that we work on, I think uh, the biggest thing uh, that makes folks wary is, is the risk of the unknown, right? Even though precipitation extraction technologies, for example, uh, have been well used and were the basis of bioprocessing starting from plasma fractionation, the familiarity now with these techniques uh, is much less than that with chromatography. And similarly for continuous modes of operation, right? Everybody's very familiar with batch operations, but continuous operations, not so much. So building uh, that sort of familiarity, and what that means is understanding the risks associated with these processes. Again, a very risk adverse industry. And uh, in order to promote the adoption of some of these technologies, really have to have a good understanding of what are the risks involved, uh, what are the failure modes and failure frequencies, and how to best operate these systems. Can we develop models that, that help folks design and operate these, these uh, types of systems? Coupled with this risk, is how you operate some of these processes. And uh, the operation very much depends on what we can measure so we can get some feedback. And so here comes in you know, process analytical technologies. All right, so current process analytical technology supports batch operations, supports chromatography. These sorts of things can be adopted to alternative processes in batch mode. When you go to continuous mode, now there's even more pressure put on the analytical because the feedback times are significant. And as everybody understands who, who, who thinks about control theory and control of processes, the more delays that you have between measurement and taking control action, the more instability is inherently built into the system. So we, we need to understand the risks, we need to, be, need to be able to make measurements, and we need to be able to use those measurements to control the processes new things to develop on uh, alternative separations and more time pressure on continuous separations. Well, with us in BioOutsource, we have a real challenge in hiring enough staff that are actually really well trained and know um, the analytics and the analytic methodologies that we want to use. So um, what we find we're doing is we're doing a lot of the training ourselves, but it would be a lot easier for us if we could actually hire those guys that were already trained and experienced in the stuff that we're trying to do. I think it's just, it comes from a real expansion in the market. The market's getting huge. There's lots of companies setting up. There's lots of people um, getting hired in all parts of the world. And I think there's just a lack of people that are available. Um, there's people, there's colleges, there's training, so it's out there, but um, the, the business is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So one of the biggest challenges for us as a company who's providing tools is of course to collaborate with those type of, let's say, early adopters to ensure that we as well can industrialize those processes because currently they are <clears throat> at, at small scale and not really at the industrial level. I think one of the challenges we face is, okay, you know, what are the solutions we're going to develop? 
uh, in, that, in that emerging field. So, so how we try and overcome that is actually to partner with those companies and actually reach out uh, to ensure you know that we indeed develop the right solutions. So really close, good collaborations with the customers are, are really essential and crucial in that, in that area. So industry uh, is facing the biggest challenges around about being able to dual source resins. Um, at the moment there were no other options to dual source Agarose resins and for now uh, we've been able to create uh, an option for customers to finally dual source from, from a very credible supplier. We've been, we've been making resins for 35 years and uh, we have 25 years experience in, in the regulatory aspect as well. So we're very well placed to, to be really be addressing those new challenges. So challenges are, of course, uh, all the time it's time challenges, you know, you develop today the product A and of course when uh, some interesting uh, person from the industry is coming, he's asking, but when you have, uh, let's say, um, next to the process development tool, when you have it available in manufacturing uh, uh, scale, for example, for looking to our company itself, of course the challenge is always time. So we have to develop our products in a much faster way and in the same time, of course, we have to make sure that we reach all these goals uh, which are required from the industry. As I said before, quality, time, uh, cost reduction, all of these things, to bundle this together, this is the challenge, I would say. So there you have it. Do you agree or disagree? We'd love to hear what you think, so please get in touch via Twitter and join in the conversation. Make sure to check out the website in the link below to watch all the highlights and more interviews from this year's conference. And we look forward to seeing you next year in Amsterdam. <laughs>